Amines are basic compounds, meaning that they can react with acids to result in products where the amine has gained a proton, such as if we do a generic example here, we have three R groups, whatever groups we want there, directly attached to the nitrogen. We react with, for example, HCl. The product of this reaction of an acid with the amine base is that the amine is going to use its lone pair of electrons to grab that proton from the acid, forcing the hydrogen chlorine bond to break and resulting in the formation of a salt. We refer to it as a salt product because salts refer to compounds that have positive and negative formal charges. So now that we bonded that hydrogen there on our nitrogen, nitrogen has a positive formal charge and the chloride is the counter ion to this. So in this video, what we are going to look at is how we go about naming these so-called ammonium salts. We refer to them as ammonium salts because the term ammonium refers to a positively charged nitrogen atom. In other words, a nitrogen that has four covalent bonds will be referred to as an ammonium ion because it will have that positive formal charge on it. So this is an example of an ammonium salt group. So how do we go about naming these ammonium salts? To go about naming amine salts, those products that result from reacting an amine with an acid, what we will do is we will take whatever the amine name would have been and replace the amine part of that IUPAC name with the term ammonium. Additionally, we have to specify the identity of the counter anion in the case of our, our earlier example that was a chloride anion. So we indicate that in the name as well as the very last part of the name. So let's take a look at an example here to illustrate this. So for this particular compound, like so, we recognize, even though I haven't specifically listed formal charges here, in piecing together what the structure of this has to be, we can spell it out more explicitly that the nitrogen has to be connected to those two hydrogen atoms, the isopropyl group and the ethyl group, and that's going to make the nitrogen have a positive formal charge. The chlorine, on the other hand, is the counter ion, so that's going to have that negative charge, making that chloride there. So therefore, in naming this structure, what we do is indicate in the counter anion name as the last part of the name, I'm gonna go ahead and fill that in as chloride, because chlorine becomes chloride when it has a negative formal charge. And then in order to determine the name of our ammonium anion here, what we will do is think about what the name would have been for the amine that was the starting material for creating this protonated product. So the amine that corresponded to this would correspond to the structure that we had here as the protonated molecule, the NH2 there, with just one less proton because what we did in order to go from the amine starting material to the salt is we reacted with acid so that we brought in a new bond to a proton on that nitrogen atom. And so therefore, our starting amine, thinking backwards, was this. And so if we name that amine, and then we simply replace the amine part of the name with ammonium, we will have the name of our amine salt. That salt being the protonated form that's going to have a positive formal charge on it there. So the name of this amine, going back to our rules for IUPAC nomenclature of amines, Coming up with the parent name for this amine, we find our longest carbon chain. Our longest carbon chain is gonna be this three carbon chain right here. So I'm going to go ahead and fill that in and I'll highlight that here. So three carbon chain right here, plugging in one, two, three. So our parent name for this molecule with three carbon atoms is going to be propan amine, and I'm calling this amine right now because we haven't uh, brought in the proton yet. We're just thinking about what we would name the amine that was used to create the ammonium salt. So we have three carbon atoms in our longest carbon chain, so we call it propanamine, and the amine group is present on that longest carbon chain at position two of the chain, 
And so I'm going to refer to this specifically as 2-propanamine. You could also call this propantuamine. And then at the front of the name here for molecules that have just an amine group, and we have the parent chain and then another alkyl group coming off of the nitrogen, we refer to that as an N group. So this would be, here our two carbon chain, we would refer to as an N di, I'm sorry, an N ethyl group. So N ethyl right there. So we call this N ethyl two propanamine as what we used to start here. So now to refer to this instead of our starting material, instead to refer to the salt, all we would need to do is convert the term amine at the end of this name to ammonium. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm just rewriting what we had before here. So it was N ethyl to propan ammonium. And then don't forget the term chloride there. So we've just replaced the term amine with the term ammonium. And that is going to be the way that we go about naming these amine salts. So if you see the term amine in a name, that means that you're referring to the amine molecule where we have no formal charge on the nitrogen. If you see the term ammonium there at the end, what that means is that the amine has gained a proton so that now the amine has the positive formal charge that we see here. And another clue that you are dealing with an amine salt is that not only do you see the term ammonium, you also see the term chloride. So let's talk about another scenario that you might run into where you have to name an amine salt. And that is the scenario where you're dealing with compounds like pyrrol or pyrimidine, for example, or pyridine, where you don't have the term amine in the parent name to start with. So how do you go about naming those as amine salts? Let's take a look at an example. So in this example, what we're going to do is we are going to draw out this structure right here. And this aromatic molecule will have a positive charge on the nitrogen. I'm gonna go ahead and fill in my anion there as Cl. How do we go about naming this? Well, we look at the names of the different aromatic amines that we learned about. And we learned this structure was referred to as pyridine. And so when pyridine picks up a proton, as we saw here, the name becomes pyridinium. Pyriden, adding that IUM. And the IUM there, much like the term ammonium, refers to the fact that there is a positive formal charge. The IUM designates the positive formal charge. And then chloride, we will tag onto that in order to indicate that we have that counter ion present there. So pyridine becomes pyridinium. And so the general rule here is that for these heterocycles, for the heterocyclic amines, the amine salt name will basically have the heterocycle name with the suffix I-U-M to designate that it's picked up a proton. And you'll remove the E from the end of the original amine name as well. So that's how we went from pyridine, which was the original aromatic heterocyclic molecule that we looked at, to pyridinium chloride, because we just took pyridine, we removed the E from that name, and we replaced it with the IUM to indicate that the pyridinium had picked up a proton in order to 
become that cation. And the cation is indicated by the IUM name, much like ammonium designates the other amines that we were talking about. In the case of these heterocyclic amines, we don't have the amine parent name to work from. And so therefore, in order to specify the fact that the amine has picked up a positive charge, we replace the E from the name with the term IUM.